So um, while Jill is doing that, uh, one thing I was going to mention later, but I'll, I'll do it now. Um, we will have on the Squaddy Hub, um, we will have a little form on there, um, uh, a little quick jot form that if you do have any issues with a player missing on the weekend, um, so obviously you can, in youth, you can register to right up to, to pretty close to it. Uh, if you put your team sheet in and your blogs uh, can't be on the team sheet, um, then uh, just pop it in on that form uh, and that will let us know that we need to, we need to look at that. So um, that will be on the Squaddy Hub. It will be pretty well um, posted. Awesome. I think I think we're good to go, Liam. We, we got there. <laughs> Excellent. Sometimes these uh, Zooms acts like a bit of a jail. We do run sessions on multiple different platforms. So so we got there. So hopefully everyone can see my screen now. So just for context, we are on a mobile phone. So what we'll be going through is what Squaddy is, what the app looks like signing in and then completing a, a team sheet. So just for everyone's viewing, it is the Squaddy app. Now, the Squaddy app is available on the Apple iOS um, store as well as the Google Play Store. You can find Squaddy just by searching in and, and punching in Squaddy. So that's spelled S-Q-U-A-D-I. Now, once you do download the Squaddy app, you will see it is the purple looking um, app that's on the um, left hand side of my screen, which I will select. So now once you jump into Squaddy for the first time, this will be the default screen in the screen that you will see. Now, this is not only for yourself as managers. It's also worth noting that that all other users and, and roles use this app as well. So whether they may be a coach. They may be a player or they may simply just be a spectator, a spectator meaning that they're just wanting and, and have an interest in the league and they're following the league. So as part of that process, they need to download the Squaddy app as well. Now, the first step when you sign into the app as part of this process is you do need to sign into the app. Now, as part of the, the process that, that we set up from the integration that we do have with Play Football, all the data that is in sitting within Play Football in terms of registrations for 2023 is integrated and will push across into Squaddy. As part of that process, when that data is pushed across, it automatically does create accounts and establish accounts for you. So as part of that process, what you do is you do simply need to go log back in. As part of that process, if you don't have an automated email that you've received already, you will just forget, um, press forget password to, to sign in as part of that process. Now, you can create an account, but if you do create an account and receive a message that an account already exists, that means that one already does exist and you just need to reset the password. So for the purposes of this demonstration, what I'm going to do is, is sign in. So to sign in with email and password, like once, once again, if you don't remember uh, your password, you can just reset that as part of the, the process when signing in. And when you sign in, you can also um, set remember password. It is something that you're just doing for the first time in the initial setup. So you won't be often that, that you're needing to be um, signing in and out. It's just signing in that, that initial time. Now to log in, and once you've logged in, you will see as a default screen, this will be your home page. So you should see on the top left-hand corner your name. So that you should see that, that your first name, and it will say welcome back. As part of this process as well, it will default to the home screen. So the home screen being the button on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that there's a little house there that says home sitting on it. As part of that, you will see this home screen populates news and updates. So that's news and updates that has been pushed by those that own the competition and run the competition, as well as the clubs as well have the ability to, to add in information and, and push notifications. So this is an education piece and a banner piece that will sit at the top of the screen and, and will populate important information that may be in the instance that there's cancellations or adjustments or any information that, that that's needing the, the user to be acknowledged. You will see as well as part of this that you will see your schedule, right? So this is a compilation and a summary of all your roles or all, all your roles in regards to managing. Now you could be managing more than one team. That's absolutely fine. But this is what we call the home screen in your schedule. And you will see on this screen, your match cards. So as you go through this screen, you will see match cards that relate to upcoming matches. And for example, if we take these two, um, these two uh, matches that I've set up for the example this evening. So 
for example, you will see that there's a match card that says managing, and that will present that you're managing team one versus team two. So that would be your team. As part of this match card, it does state the, the date, obviously the time of the, the match as well. It also does state the venue as well. So it is worth noting that as part of this card that, that presents on your home screen as managers, you do have the ability to select and it will take you to Google Maps. So to do that and actually view the venue, you can see that there is the presentation of NFO that sits there. And then what you do is you will select that and there'll be a pop-up which will present that oval. You have the ability to see the full name of that oval as well as by selecting map that will take you to the location that specifically where that venue and, and field lies. Now it is also worth noting as well if you've signed in and you have not seen your match cards, you have not seen your match cards on this home screen. So in the instance that you're signing in, you're not seeing a match card saying managing. This is purely because your club has not has not added you as a manager yet to that team that you're managing. So what that means is that actual, that you need to speak to an admin that's that's got admin access, squatty admin access, and just ask them to add you in as a manager to the team. Once they've added you as a manager, you should see, you should see your match cards present as they are on this screen. So it's just worth noting if you're not seeing those match cards, that's because you haven't been added as a manager. Now, on a match day, for example, what you'll do is if we take the the example that's sitting there for the 18th of April, the match starting at 6.30 p.m., to engage and to begin the journey of um, completing the team sheet, you need to select that match card. So to select that match card, you just simply select the card anywhere. Bear with me. My screen has just chopped out, so I'll reshare my screen. Very sensitive. All right, so to do that, you do select that card. As you select that card, it will open up. And as it opens up, it will say, again, the details of the match. So the date, the time, as well as your role. So you can see there that the, that the blue dot and the managing indicates that you are managing this match card. Now, as part of the process, what we'll do is we'll go through completing the team sheet. But prior to doing that, we'll just give you a run over of exactly what sits on this screen. So you can see up the top team sheet, that's where you'll be completing your team sheets by selecting team sheets. As well as part of this process, you do have visibility across the game referees. So the referees that are being allocated to the match in the instance that, that, that there's referees for the match, as well as the starting formation in the instance that that setting has been applied. As well as that, you will see the field there again, and then down the bottom, you will see that there's attending. Now, down the bottom of this screen, it is worth noting that this list of individuals that sits here is everyone that's in your team. So that's everyone that's in your team and that you will see their name there. And you will see that there's a status that sits underneath them. Now, it's worth noting that this status does not impact them in terms of a playing day or being selected on the team sheet. The reason this is here is purely just an education piece to you as a manager to inform you if the individual has signed into the app and has access to the app. So for example, you can see that there is a bunch of players here that are saying player not signed in. That simply is just an education piece that means the player has not signed into the app. Once they've signed into the app, you will see that status change because on the player's side of things, they do have the ability to uh, mark their attendance. So they can mark yes or no in terms of attendance for that specific match. You can see, for example, Aiden, Smith has not responded, so it says no response. So once again, this piece down the bottom is just a summary, a summary and an education piece of all the players that are in your team, along with the status indicating if they've signed into the app, as well as that, if they've signed into the app, if they've responded yes or no, this has no impact on term, in terms of their selection in the team sheet. In terms of if the individual doesn't want to download the app, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, we encourage them to download the app, during the process and, and to be part of it, to, 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 to embrace essentially the, the whole flow and all the, the ability that lies within this app. However, if they're not wanting to, that's completely fine. It is not, not mandated, but we do encourage everyone to, to, to sign into the app, regardless of which role that you're part of. So the first workflow that we'll be going through is the team sheet. So the team sheet is completing the team sheet. Now, 
Um, my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Liam, that, um, that at the moment, team sheets are available five days out from the beginning of, of the match. So... Yeah, so we what we've done for, for this week, and we'll get a bit of club feedback on this, but essentially um, our team sheets can be done pretty much from tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, so if you want to go in and, and do your team sheet to make sure you can get it done, uh, you can pretty much submit your team sheet on your phone um, from, from tomorrow through to this week, uh, for this weekend's games. So um, by all means, if you want to do that and then not be stressing too much about doing it on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, you're welcome to do that. Yep. Awesome. So providing you've been added as a manager, as mentioned before, you should see that match card. Once you jump into that match card, you will have access to the Sheen team sheet. Now, if the team sheet is grayed out, that simply means that it's just not available yet. For the purpose of this demonstration, and as Liam mentioned there, you will have access to the team sheet um, already. So to complete the team sheet, now it is worth noting that the first example, the first example that we'll be doing here is specific to substitutions. So we will do a team sheet specific to substitution. So as part of that process to complete the team sheet, you select the team sheet. That will then open up a list of all the individuals that sit within your team. So these are the teams that have come across um, and that have been built within Squatty. So this is a list of all the individuals. Now, if there's an individual that's not appearing in this team, that simply means that they just need to be added they need to be added into the team. It means that they're, they're not added yet, but this should have a list of all the individuals that are within your team. Now you will see as part of this, this process, you will see a, a summary list of all the players, obviously, but you will see up the top that it says not playing. So to complete the team sheet, what you need to do is on the right-hand side is to select that button on the right-hand side now it's worth noting because this is substitution, because this is substitution, as part of substitution, it will require you to select the position and do starting formation as part of the workflow. So as we select on the right-hand side, that individual, so we're gonna select the 11 individuals, the 11 individuals. So just, you select the just individual. before you do that, Jalen, just to, to put some minds at ease, uh, no youth football will need to do substitution. This is pretty much for um, first grade. Um, we don't need to do this in there, so that's yeah. We, we don't need to do um, formations and starting positions for anything pretty much outside first grade. So um, yeah, that's just in case anyone's getting nervous about having to do under thirteens formations, we don't have to do that. They will be the interchange version, which we'll uh, we'll touch on. Perfect. Thanks for that. So to select the individuals in regards to specific to, to substitution, on the right-hand right side, you do select the individual. Now you can see, for example, I've selected Jack. So by selecting Jack, you can see that Jack has now moved into a playing area. So that means he will be playing. He's in that starting 11 and he's going to be playing. So to complete the team sheet, you do need to go through the process of selecting all the other individuals. Now it is worth noting as part of this process, you will see on the left-hand side, you see their photo. Now we are in a test environment, so you will see some, some dummy images, but the expectation providing that they've got a photo that has been uploaded to their profile, you will see their image uploaded and present next to their name there on the left-hand side. You will obviously see their name, you will see their shirt number, and then you will see their position. Now, it is also worth noting that the shirt number and the position does pre-populate. And what I mean by that is the first time that you're going through the team sheet process, you will be required to add in a shirt number and a position because it is the first time that you are doing the team sheet. The following weeks that that um thereafter, those will stick. So the shirt number and the playing position will stick alongside that profile. So that's information that you will not have to re-enter. That, that will remain against that profile. To view the actual individual as well, it is also worth noting that you can select the individual's profile. By selecting individual's profile, that will open up their photo and then it will display their name. Now, in the instance that we are in a testing environment, but you will see under the name present their FFA number and their date of birth. So this is what we call in terms of if there's any validation that's required, you can select the individual's photo and that will open up with their first, last name, their date of birth, and their FFA number. So to follow through the process of adding the remainder of the players in, on the right-hand side, you do need to select the other individuals. So for example, I'm gonna go through that, that process. 
to select those individuals. Now, it is also worth noting just before I do select the remaining individuals as part of that, as part of that process, you can add a player. Now, adding a player is simply adding a player because you may be borrowing them. And that's, that's what it refers to, is that you will be borrowing a player. Now, depending on the competition rules is where you can borrow from. So those will be set, those will be set as part of the process that, that's gonna be outlined by your competition regulations. Now, Liam, was there any sort of anything that you need to touch on in, in terms of borrowing or anything like that? No, nah, so there's no, no different rules. So essentially, if you've got a Resi's squad member um, stepping up to, to play first grade for the weekend, or you've got 14 stepping up to play 15s for the weekend, that's the type of thing there. They're not generally in your squad, um, but they can they can then be brought up to, to play uh, in a game or however many, as long as they're age eligible. Perfect. So in terms of adding a player, you do select add a player. And then that will open up a search engine and that search engine will be restricted. And what I mean by restricted is you can only search based on the rules and the competition rules that be, be outlined by Northern New South Wales is where you can borrow those players from. So whether that's a younger age group or wherever that may be. And then to find that individual and add them in, you simply press up the top, the search for someone and you search their name. So knowing that, that, that you know their name you'll search them up. And as part of that, we are in a test environment, but they will populate those names and you'll select the individual and then they'll be added to that team sheet. Now, as part of this process, I will go through the process of selecting my individual players as part of the 11. So once again, on the right-hand side, I'm selecting them and selecting a position. Now, as mentioned before, these positions, in the instance that it is substitution, as Liam mentioned, this will be the process. I will follow after this with, with interchange, which, which does not have position tracking and starting formation in place. Now, once you've selected your individuals that are starting within the lineup, you also ask are required to add those that will be on the bench as well. So it is the same process. So on the right hand side, you do select. And as you do select, you will see an option there as bench. And then that will essentially place them on the bench and you will do the same for any others that will be on the bench. So just to recap what we've been through there. So for example, we've gone into our match card, gone into team sheet, We've selected our individuals. Gone through the process of selecting those individuals that will be starting in the 11 by selecting a position. And then what we've done is we've also selected individuals that will be part of the team sheet that will be on the bench. Now, once you've completed your team sheet by selecting the individuals, in the top right-hand corner, you will see that there is a done button, and then that will submit those individuals as part of the team sheet. Now, that will default you and place you straight to the team sheet in terms of the other teams. Now, it's worth noting that you won't get visibility of the other team sheet and those that are in the other team that will be starting in their lineup until it locks. So based on when Northern New South Wales lock the team sheet is when you will have visibility of the other team. As part of the next process, you will then need to go to the starting formation. And as you do the starting formation, you will see that the individuals that you've just filled out as part of that team sheet will populate into a general starting formation based on the positions that you put in. To complete the starting formation, you do just go through the workflow of essentially tapping the individual and holding the individual and then dragging them in, into their position. So again, this is for things like bar TV, for ground announcers, for team of the week, um, things like that. So this is uh, the position tracking for, for this is only first grade um, in all three competitions. So by all means, um, um, yeah, 
do it for, for reserve grade or whatever, but it's it's only required for first grade. Yep. And then you will see as well down the bottom, um, it will display bench and then it will display those individuals that you've slapped on the bench. So as as Liam said, it's not not mandated for for specific to, to those levels. However, you will have the ability depending on if it is if it is substitution as part of that that process. And this will display publicly once the team sheets are locked. So that is the, the process in terms of filling out your team sheets specific to substitutions. So just once again, to recap, go on through the process of selecting the 11 individuals and then their positions and they put them under playing, then selecting those that are on the bench. And then you will see a subset of individuals that may not be playing. So they might be at the squad and simply just not playing within that day. And then they'll remain in not playing. You have the ability as part of that down the bottom to add a player. So that's adding a player in terms of borrowing a player from another team. To do that, you do select add player, search that individual by their first name, and then you will see that they're in, their details will populate and then you will select them. Awesome. Liam, I think we'll, we'll just pause there quickly for a couple of questions and then we'll jump straight on to, to interchange. Well, there's a couple of questions in the uh, uh, in the in the chat that are relevant to, to just this. So one just come up there. Uh, how many bench players can you add? That is just uh, the same as what the the rules and regs state at the moment. So uh, five, so up to up to sixteen for youth, and then there's there's extras at, at senior level. Um, and how long for kickoff? Uh, is the team sheet locked? Look, we will um keep it pretty tight um for the first couple of weeks. The idea is that it will be between fifteen and thirty minutes. Um, but we'll probably let it go up to kind of five to ten minutes in this first couple of weeks, just to make sure we're not uh, we're not causing any issues for anyone. But uh, essentially, um, yeah, essentially that's uh, that's what will happen there. Um, adding a player from JDL to the 13th team sheet, um, I believe the JDL players should come across. If not, that's something we can talk to Scotty about grabbing the, the players at that age group. Um, because you're absolutely spot on. Plenty of teams in the 13s borrow from under 12s, uh, so we'll make sure that can, that can happen. Uh, can you update and change positions each week if required? Absolutely. It just pre-populates to save you a bunch of time and putting in short numbers and positions, but uh, if someone's playing midfield one week and defence another week, just you just change it uh, when you select them um, there as well. Um, I think that's... If you submit the team sheet, that's a good one, um, Jalen. If you submit the team sheet early, um, can you edit it later if availability or injury changes? What's the, the best? Correct. Way? Yeah. So if you've, you've got the ability, so all those all those um submissions will stick, and mm -hmm. you've got the ability to jump in and make any changes necessary up until it's locked. So as Liam said, until it's locked. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, uh, a couple of questions there on who gets to see that. So again, uh when we lock it. Um, so again, we'll probably lock it earlier for first grade once we're all used to the system. Uh, so for ground announcers and media and the like that, that want to have access to that, once that's locked, that information becomes public. So you just make sure your ground announcer has access to squad that they can jump in and see that match uh, and they'll have access to, uh, to uh, all that public information. Um, awesome. All right, I'm just a uh, couple of questions on, just before we go to the next point, there's a couple of questions on, I don't have players in my team yet or I don't have access yet. I've put a couple of answers in the uh, in the chat. If you don't have players yet, that's because they haven't been assigned to your, your team yet. Um, so that's something we'll send a reminder to all the clubs tomorrow. Um, just make sure those that haven't done it already do it. And if you don't have access as a manager, um, then we're, we're going to remind them to make sure the managers have access there as well. Um, very quickly, Jalen, how do I delete a manager? Rod's asked, uh, how do we delete a manager? For yep. one so that, that's done on the web admin side. So the same process that your club admin goes through in terms of adding a manager, they have the ability to, to remove that manager as well. So it's the same process, but done by the club admin. Yeah, I'm just looking at that, guys, and um, I can see where I can edit the manager, but I can't see where I can actually delete it on the on the website. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to stay on and, and hold on the end, we're, we're happy to to go through that process because that is just switching back to the the web admin. But more than happy to to show. Okay, you. thank you. Awesome. All right, I think Liam, let's kick on with the the interchange yep. um, process. Yep. So it is it is the same process. It is a simpler version, and what I mean by that is you're not selecting any positions and you're not doing starting formation. So it's part of that process for the team sheet. 
for interchange. Once again, you select your match card, which will be on the home screen. And then up the top, you will see team sheet. And you will see the same presentation in terms of you will see your team. And as part of that, you will select the individual that's participating within the team. Now you are selecting the 16 or the 18, depending on, on how many that's, that's applicable to your competition rules. And what you do is you select them on the right hand side, as you select them, you can see that they will then shift into playing, meaning that they actually are playing within the match. You go through the process of selecting all those individuals that will be playing to complete your team sheet. So you will see once again that all the individual shirt numbers as well as um, their photos is there. So that, that will stick once being placed in. Now you've also got the ability as well as before, you've got the ability to add a player. So if you are borrowing a player, that still remains as part of interchange. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we've gone through the process and we've selected all our individuals that will be in or on the team sheet. And then we'll select done. As part of that process, that means it is submitted. So you can jump back in to make any adjustments. So that may be, for example, those team sheets have not locked yet. So we're wanting to take, for example, Charlie Griffiths off. So to take Charlie Griffiths off the team sheet, we simply on the right-hand side, deselect Charlie. And then that would move Charlie back under not playing. And then we may, for example, want to put Hank Tom into the starting team sheet for interchange. And we do that by selecting him. So you can make those a change those changes up until the team sheet is locked. Now, once it is locked, it is also worth noting that the referee has the ability to override any changes. So once that's locking, that locking is in place, that the that the referee has the ability to make any overarching or overriding changes if required as part of this process. So you do select those individuals, you'll press done, and then that is the process in terms of your team sheet being submitted. We'll just pause there as well, Liam, um, just to, to answer any questions, further questions that may have come through. Yeah. So um, just a couple of quick ones that have come up. Does this process need to be followed for JDL? No, uh, there's no team sheets for JDL, so don't, don't stress about that. That's all good. Uh, one of the questions asked was, do we need to put in goals and uh, cards and that type of thing? Absolutely not. That's the referee's responsibility. Um, they will have access to all of that data afterwards. And as soon as they hit save on that team sheet, that information will all become public as well. So your goals, cards, stats, subs, they'll all be public as soon as the referee hits done and verifies uh, their, their stuff after the game. A um, couple of other questions that are in here. Uh, again, we're getting a few about um, managers not being set up and uh, players not being in there. Um, that's absolutely the responsibility of the, the club at this point. If we uh, if you're a club admin and, and haven't been able to do that, then please absolutely get in touch with, with Jason tomorrow and he can he can sort you out with that. Um, otherwise, we will send a, a, a big reminder to all clubs um, tomorrow morning um, with this video and a reminder to make sure everyone is set up and uh, ready to go. Um, once a player is added, is it permanent? Um, I assume you mean uh, once they're added to a, a team, like a borrowed player, Alex? Is that is that what I'm... I'm reading there, mate. I'll I'll just answer that that one, Liam. So so in terms of the displays of the um, individuals in the team sheet, those are those they are the individuals that are actually added in the team. Now down the bottom, when you add a player, that is for the instance of borrowing a player, so they will be there for that team, and then you will then need to borrow them in the future. And what this what the system does, it actually does track any borrowing. If any borrowing rules are in place, you can start to track how many times a, a, a player has been borrowed. If there's an individual that needs to be on that team more permanently, then you can make that adjustment in the club admin side, but actually adding them as a permanent player if required. Uh, so a couple of questions around what's the process on um, refs uh, and uh, entering goals or cards incorrectly. Um, obviously, we don't now have a, a big bit of paper to sign off on. Uh, what you will see is you'll get it again pretty instantly on your uh, on your phone um, uh, within the app to see that. If there's any mistakes, the same as uh, we really best well in the world, we sign off on team sheets. And I think 
we may not uh, take in lots of data at that point. Uh, so just contact uh, the competitions team. Luke's just popped that in there, competitions at Northern. If you then spot a yellow card or goal that was incorrectly added, um, and uh, we can we can follow up with the referee as well. Uh, so borrowing is done game by game, yes, Alex, uh, unless, just as Jalen said there, uh, if you've got a player in your 13s that plays a lot of 14s, uh, they can also be added to that team uh, as well. So you're the web admin, uh, the club admin person can just pop them in. So you see you having to do that every week. Sorry, Liam. So a player can be um, a player graded in two age groups. Yes, I believe that's the case, Jalen. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That is that is a, that is that is allowed at the moment. Now, if there's any terms of regulations that doesn't require that, can all be monitored and, and tracked through the system very easily. So nah, that's all right. We're happy to to have that available. Save a, save a bit of time for everyone. All awesome. Right. All right. What, okay. what, we'll, what we'll do now is we'll just spend the next five to 10 minutes just walking through just some general functionality that also sits within the app specific to, to managers and, and actually that, that, that um, other individuals that, that have access to it as well. So what I'll do is I'll just run through those, um, run over these quite um, now in the, in the next five to 10 minutes. So the first one I wanted to run through is the draw. So you can see on the bottom left hand side next to the home, you've got the ability to view the draws. Now, this will default and have the ability to see those draws specific to to you as a manager and the team that you're managing. You also have the ability to view other teams as well. So that might be another team that that, that you're wanting to, to follow. As part of that process, you do that in the top right hand corner and you add that team in. So you go through the process of searching that team as you search that team, you will be requested to ask what club they are from. So that's the initial ask is what with the club. And then it'll line up and state all the um, teams that are specific to that, that club. And then you can add them to your watch list. So to do that, you select them on the right hand corner and then press done. That will add them to your watch list. And then you have the ability and you can see at the top of the screen, there's a little arrow that you can view the different teams that, that you are following. So you can toggle between each of those teams. This draw page does have obviously the results as part of this. So it has all the fixtures past, present and in the future. And then you can see that there is the input of the scores. You can select that score to open up um, the actual match center itself. So to do that, you do select the little eye icon. And what you'll see is that will break down the, the score. So you can see in this instance, there was a penalty shootout, depending on your competition rules and, and, and what's in place, you will just see first and second half and the breakdown of those scores, which has all, all been inputted um, accordingly um, by the referee. As part of this as well, there is an action log. So that action log populates um, once again, based on, on what's being tracked by the referees in the settings, but there is the ability to have an action log there as well, which you can view the breakdown of, of that action log. As well as Liam mentioned before, we've got the ability to, to populate all the players' stats as well. And that's also viewed as part of that. As well as that, we've obviously got the ladders. So you can see the ladders in um, by selecting the, the ladders tab that will obviously um, present the ladder at first. Now we are making constant changes to the app. So you will see that there will be some changes to this ladder. And what I mean by that is we will be enhancing the ladder in terms of displaying those um, past results, as well as removing some, some columns and adding some columns as well. So what you'll see as well is you've got the ability up the top to again, toggle between the different teams that, that you're following to view their ladders as well. As well as this, you've got the ability to create team chats. So you can see that there is a team chat um, and a messages um, uh, function that sits at the, the bottom right hand corner of the screen. By selecting that, this will open up your messages. Now you as a manager have the ability and, and um, have the ability to create a chat with your team. So that's all the individuals that will be part of your team. It's worth noting that as part of that process, the players do not have the ability to create chats between themselves. It is just the manager that, that, that controls the process of creating the chat. To do that in the top right hand corner, to create a chat, you do select the plus button and then it will select will ask you whether you want to create a team chat. So that will be, for example, if you're, if you're um, looking after multiple teams, you can search your team. And then to do that, you select that team. And then you say, add chat. 
that ad chat will then populate and that will be a chat with all individuals that will be part of your team and you can engage with that that chat you've also got the ability to add attachments as well in that team chat with the team chat function as well you've also got the ability to create a chat with for example it may just be the forwards or it may just be the defenders or it may just be the midfielders or a certain subgroup or in, of individuals that sit within your team so to do that on the right hand side you select users and you'll just search for those individuals and then those individuals will populate. So just the one thing on that, Jalen, um, whilst the, the, uh, the ability is there to do that and, and can be very useful, uh, I'd advise from a member, member protection point of view that you don't engage in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a child um, or anything like that. So please make sure that anyone, uh, it's the same as WhatsApp or, or text messaging, um, that the same kind of rules should apply. Um, but that's just another uh, communication tool that's that, that's available to us. Uh, but those same standards should apply as well. So uh, don't be getting in one-on-one -on -one chats between an adult and a and a child um, without more than one adult being kind of present in that in that discussion. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good point, Liam. So that's that's a rundown on the messages. The last part we want to go through is just in the bottom right hand corner. The more option now this is just the breakdown of of essentially the app itself so we'll have the ability to switch profiles so you may have an individual maybe your child maybe someone else that's linked to your account so you can switch profiles so to do that providing that they are linked properly up the top you set switch profile and then you can toggle between those individuals so for example i can toggle to child's account so i can get visibility of the child's account and then I can get visibility of what it looks like from their side. So you can see there's a difference. So you can see that they've got a playing match card. And if you meant, if you remember before, they have the ability to say yes or no to, to matches as required. As part of this um, section and area of the system as well, you've got the ability to view a summary of your team. So there is some really cool statistics um, that are populated within the system. Some of those being game time. So all the game time will be tracked depending on, on the settings that are placed within the system by Northern New South Wales. As mentioned before, you can track borrowed players. So this does track how many times a player will be borrowed. And you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, it will populate and will highlight those dots as they are borrowed. And there may be rules in place in terms of borrowing if, if they are enforced. As well as that, you've got the ability to, again, view your schedule. So that's your schedule of any upcoming matches and your roles associated to them. And then the last, and, and I say the, the most important one um, is part of this, this process as well, is the ability to also create some events. So you can see there that there's my events option, and that's creating events. So that might be a training session that you might want to set up that's reoccurring, or it might just be a one-off event. So to create that event, you do select the my events option and then you're going to be typing in for example the type of event that you're going to create so we'll just do a training um, session for example then what you'll do is it'll ask for the venue so you can see that there's some um, venues that will be pre-populated as part of this that will be connected to your club you may have an alternate location that you may want to add in so you'd select that venue you have some event types, so whether it is a training session, so we are doing a training session for now. You could add a description to the training session, so it may be bring your drink bottles or anything along the, the lines of that that you'd like to add into this specific event. And then as well as that, um, you've got the ability to um, then set who's invited. So that would be, for example, once again, um, teams or users to that specific event. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process and create this event for the team. And then the last one is the frequency and the start time. So you will just set when it starts and then when it finishes and then the frequency. So that may be daily, that might be weekly or might just be a once-off event. So we will set it as weekly. And then how many times you'd like that to be repeated. So for example, we want it repeated 10 times for the next 10 weeks. And then you press create event. That will then populate that event on your manager's card. And you will see, for example, I've just gone back to, to the home screen. You can see the breakdown of all those training sessions. And then just to give you an idea of what that looks like for the child or the player or the participant on their side, 
they will then see that there is those events that will populate. So you can see that they've got the ability here to see the training session and saying yes or no, as they would for a match. And the last thing that I will just, just point out is the ability to add people to your account. So you can see here that you'll see an option under more that says my profile. As part of that process, you can add in other individuals. So for example, be adding in your child, providing that, that they go through the permission process, or there may be another individual, um, such as you may be linking a parent to a child or a child to a parent. So to do that process, once you've signed into your app, you select more and then you go my profile. And then what you do is you select my full profile. This will then populate your details or the default details. And it's from here that you're gonna add in that individual by selecting the three dots on the right hand side and then selecting personal details. And then you will see the option here present itself to either add a parent or add a child. So you can see within this specific account, I've got two children that have been added in at the moment. To add in another child, you do select the plus button and then it'll simply ask for their first, their last name and details um, to, to add them into the account. And we'll go through the workflow, providing their, their permission to, to be added into to your account. So that wraps up the, the summary, Liam, of, of, of the app. I'm conscious that, that we are um, coming towards the end, so I want to make sure that we run over any questions and, and make sure we um, we wrap up and, and get those closed off. Okay, so a couple of questions around coaches and duty officers. Um, Gavin and Luke have been uh, pretty helpful in the, in the team chat, but for those that may, may not be following that chat there, um, at this point, uh, the app doesn't, uh, we don't have to do um, who your coaches uh, and duty officers are um, as yet in the app. That will be coming. Um, just a reminder that anyone on the bench uh, should have their team official pass anyway. Um, but uh, that will be coming. Uh, and when that is rolled out in the app, um, then we'll put that uh, regulation back into place. But at this point, uh, the team sheet is just uh, for players and subs at the moment. Uh, okay, so a couple of, I'm just going to run through to make sure we haven't missed any big questions. Um, so, again, a bunch on the registering for uh, being a manager and players, we've, we've covered that. Um, again, a little bit on a couple of questions on the what happens if a, a player gets injured in the warm up. But yep. we'll, be, we'll be pretty. Um, lenient on the, the timing, especially in these first few weeks, and then we'll, we'll get a, um, a bit of feedback from the clubs in terms of what's reasonable in terms of providing the, the team sheet to the opposition, as well as providing you the flexibility to jump in and, and make a change uh, if need be. Um, again, we're not using it for JDL. Um, just going through these, so apologies if I, if I miss anything here. Um, Bench players, no, nope, that's all been answered. Uh, again, the referee, you don't need to do any cards, goals. The referees do all that after the match. Um, this is not required for a Stewie Cup. It's not required for JDL. Um, it's only uh, the remaining competitions. Uh, and again, probably the more, one of the more important points is if there's a player that, that isn't uh, involved, you can't find a player specifically. So as an administrator, if, it's, if you're a team manager, and can't find a player, check with your administrator. Uh, they, will, they will be able to add a player if that player is available. Uh, if that player, from a club admin point of view, isn't available, um, then uh, they can contact us and we can see if there's any reason why that player is not coming across. So a couple of last um, questions that have just come in there. Um, yep, so uh, the app did say lineup, uh, not team sheet. Um, but the, there is a, a later version of the app. So if you've downloaded that previously, um, then jump into the new, uh, download the new version of the app. That will then say, um, say team sheet. Uh, the app is consistently um, being improved in, in, in additions. And, and what we'll do is uh, uh, the, the squaddy guys basically send us through their release notes of uh, anything that's been upgraded and added. Uh, and we'll basically take those from this point forward, uh, any ones that, that have an impact on you. Uh, we'll take those and, and file them out to you guys as well so that everyone's aware of 
uh, any extras or any changes that, that may impact you on a match day as well. Um, all right, uh, Jalen, did you want to just go through how to delete uh, a team manager? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Just just before we wrap up, I'll just go through just a, a couple of sort of summary points um, from, from what we went through today um, and, and sort of top three things that you should be doing now. So as mentioned before, make sure that you've, you've downloaded the app. That's the, the Squatty app. You are signing in and then claiming your user profile as part of that process. If you don't remember um, your password or if you haven't set up an account, you can just reset your password as part of that process. The second one is, if you remember on the, the home screen, so making sure that you've got your match card there. As Liam said and, and the team said, you do have access to that five days out at the moment, so you will have access to that now. If you're not seeing that match card on your home screen, then what you do um, is just follow up with your club to just make sure that you've been added as a manager. Once you're added as a manager, you should see that, that match card appear on your home screen as part of that, that process. Um, and just a, a couple of last um, questions to, to go through and, and ones that, that we quite commonly um, receive. So um, uh, as mentioned before, if you are receiving a message when you're signing into the, the Squatty app um, that an account already exists, that means that one has already, already been created for you. So you just do need to reset your password as part of that process. There may be some instances um, where you are seeing um, your child when you sign in instead of... Uh, yourself and that's because both your child and yourself share the same email address which is completely fine you just do need to link yourself into the account or you need to link your child into the account so vice versa depending on the, the situation um the other one we just went through so what if i'm not seeing my match card that means that you're not or you have not yet been added as a manager yet so you can't see those match cards on your home screen and then the last one is what if you're not seeing a player, so the player may be missing, and that would be in the instance that they may not be added to the team yet um, as part of the process. So that is done on the, the club admin side as part of the setting up and the onboarding process is making sure that you've got your teams set up and making sure that all those players are added into the team as, as part of that, that process. Um, so awesome. one other, sorry, one other little quick thing as well. Um, I'm not sure if the information has made it to you, everyone that's on this as yet. Uh, there will be, for the first weekend of using Squaddy, there will be a Squaddy helpline um, that either myself, Jason or Luke will be on the end of the phone. Um, so if you have any issues on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, um, then uh, that Squaddy helpline, which we again will resend back out to the clubs tomorrow, um, that helpline will get you directly through to either uh, Jason, Luke, or myself over the weekend. Uh, and again, we're not we're not here to, to to be really strict on getting everything perfect. We're here to help you transition and get this right. So if it's not perfect on day one, um, then we just want to make sure we we still get the games played and we have a a good record uh, of the matches as well. Awesome. I think what I'll do there is I'll just wrap up on my end, Liam, and obviously give the option for any individuals happy to, to walk through um, how to remove a manager. Um, someone did, did raise that. So just once again, thanks for, for joining the, the session and thanks everyone for your time. And as Liam mentioned, what's really important to, to Squatty and us is, is feedback. So we do take all feedback on very seriously. And as part of that process, um, we, we continually um, place that feedback into the system. So please keep on making sure that you do give feedback. Um, any feedback is, is welcome to positive, negative, or any cool ideas that you may have in terms of adding into the app where we welcome the, the, the all phases of as we transition onto the platform so once again thank you and um best of luck to the the season and, and happy to, to to stay on to to answer any additional questions or or go through anything uh, so just a reminder for everyone um first of all thanks again to uh to jill and, and gavin being here reminder this will be on the squatty hub if you haven't seen the squatty hub jump to the website uh, there's a link to it on the, the front page that's basically all of our resources. Um, Squatty have done a fantastic job of creating a bunch of videos um, similar to what you've gone through here. Um, and you can pass that on and, and share that to whoever needs to, to, to be there. Um, this uh, video will be uploaded to that as well. Um, and uh, we'll send this out to the clubs. Uh, so this will be uploaded tomorrow morning. Um, I think uh, in terms of other questions, um, I'm just trying to see any other questions. Yeah, the first seminar for Club Admins was not recorded. We had issues with that. Thankfully, this one has recorded. Uh, the last one didn't record. Uh, so if there's any issues, 
um, then by all means reach out to, to Jason and look tomorrow and, and they, can, um, they can walk you through anything that we haven't um, got to yet. Um, and can I, before, if you just want to maybe get, uh, jump into that part of the system, Jalen, to, to show Rod how uh, uh, to delete that manager as I answer this next question. Um, the process for registering players into squad by the club admin looks lengthy, it's done player by player. If it's a one-off process, once that's done um, and you've brought those players over, it, it's done once a season or once a, once a competition. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll take that feedback on board. Um, and if we do get new players, if we sign a new player tomorrow um, or next week, then that player still has to be pushed across as well. So that's something to, to bear in mind if that player um, is newly registering to your team. Jalen, you want to you wanna show awesome. us how to manage yep. Yeah, so just to, um, and, and obviously this is a, a web interface that's accessible on the web admin side, just as a, as a context and a starting point. So to remove a manager, and this is the same process for adding a manager, in the top right-hand corner, once you're signed in, you do need to go to the match day module. Now, once you've gone into the match day module, you will do need to select the competition. Now, you will be participating in a competition as a club so you're participating in a competition that, that's owned and run by northern new south wales so you'd select the competition that you're participating in and then in the top left hand corner you would hover over the competition details and then what you would do is you can go to and there's multiple options here but what you can do is you can go through the managers this will give you a list of all the managers that have been added um, currently at the moment and what you'll do on the right hand side, you'll see three dots. You'll hover over that and select edit. And then what you'll do is you'll see the teams or the teams um, that are, are currently allocated to that individual. And then to remove them, you will simply press the X button and then you'll press save. And then that will remove that individual from that, that team. Yeah, too simple. No the manager. <laughs> I was actually looking for a delete button. Okay. Now, now Jalen, you know how you saw team one there and you just deleted that? I'm from South Cardiff. And when you've got the like, let's say there's under 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, or and then um that's four or five options, you can't distinguish the teams. You have got team one, but we've got five CFCs. So you can't have you can't identify under 14s, for example. It's trial and error. Just yeah, wanted to give that feedback because it yeah. is very difficult to allocate. Yeah, and 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 that's that's a really good point. That just comes down to the naming convention used, so easily adjustable to differentiate. Ooh, so Northern New show South me, Wales. show me, please. No, no. So that that's so Northern New South Wales, um, and um. I can go through the process to to change the depending on the way that it's been set up, but you can change the name of the actual teams. But it depends if final grading's been locked as part of that. But the that's just the the name of the team needs to be changed. We all we all have a chat to to Jalen and Gavin offline about that. If there's a way we can, um, yeah. uh, it depends on how we want that to to be viewed uh, in the the front page uh, and also um, how that looks to you guys. But yeah, we we'll definitely take that on board, Matt, and we'll um. We'll come back with a, an answer one way or another. Yeah, Liam, awesome, thank Liam you. And, Liam and Jalen, just to get around that now, when when I went into the Premier Youth League and allocated the managers, I actually allocated all five teams to, to every manager. So that way, if there was a manager away, they could pick up another one. So they should be able to go through, I guess, on the, on the app and see which team they need to populate on the day. Yep. Is that a way around it for the time being? Uh, in terms of from an access standpoint, so you, you're saying that you've added uh, multiple managers or the same managers to all the teams. Uh, so, I've, so one manager I've allocated in five teams, so he can he can actually on the app he can go and say, okay, I've got to populate the under 14s team and yep. select that team and then populate it. Yeah, if that's if that's how you want to do it, and and then someone mentioned earlier, so you can have multiple or more than one manager, and and if that manages across multiple teams, you just simply add them in as part of that yeah. as what you've done there. And so, that you should see the team on the app. You should see the team then. So you Correct. Yeah. So on, on the match on the match card and on the app, they'll see each of those teams that they're assigned to as a manager. Yeah. Yeah. We will take on board that, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can come up with a, a solution to make that a bit easier. All right, guys. Look, thank you ever so much for your time. Um, we genuinely believe um that we're going through all of this, and it's taken a bit longer than we hoped, but we genuinely believe this will make your lives uh significantly easier on a match day. 
It will make information flow quicker. It will make uh, referees' lives easier and quicker. Uh, and it will uh, give you guys less work to do uh, on a weekend. So uh, we thank you very much. And we uh, we thank you for your patience to get to this point. Uh, and pre thank you for your patience in rolling out mm -hmm. number one. Um, but uh, thank you very much to everyone for jumping on board. This will be available uh, tomorrow um, online. And you can uh, pass this on to whoever needs to see it. Awesome. Great meeting, everyone. And thanks again. Yeah, well done, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.